Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I have another crayon comparison video because I've picked up a couple new packages of water soluble crayons. I picked this one up at the gift shop at the Botanical Gardens the other day. It's called Kit Pass and it's a for windows, for paper, watercolors, and safe for children, 16 colors. And I paid $17.20 for this plus tax. And um, they're on Amazon for about $19, I believe. Um, they're Japanese water-soluble crayon, and I just couldn't resist. I'm like, I had a $20 bill in my pocket. I wanted a souvenir to commemorate, commemorate my beautiful day painting, and I thought I'd give these a try. I also picked up these on Blick. They are the Karen Dosh Swiss color. There is 15 colors here. This was, I think I paid around eight or $10 for this. And um, I have, I picked these up in the past. Um, it was probably 20 years ago or so before I got my Neo Color 2s, and I really liked them. They just seemed to be half color, half sticks of Neo Color 2s. I really couldn't tell the difference, but I thought I'd get a fresh set and I would compare them to my Neo Color 2s. I've also got the Stabilo Woodies here because I know they're very popular with a lot of crafters and I wanted to compare them. And then I've got my regular Neo Color 2s, which are my favorite water soluble crayon. I really love these. I think the pigmentation, the value, the price, I mean, for what you get for the money can't be beat. And um, just as a control, I was wondering with these Kit Pots, they felt a little softer, more lipsticky than the other ones. So I wanted to compare them against Portfolio Water Soluble Oil Pastels. These are very similar to other brands of Water Soluble Oil Pastels. So I thought I'd grab them because they're, they're pretty much, they're uh, all the Water Soluble Pastels have been pretty similar. Um, water Soluble Oil Pastels felt pretty similar. I don't know if these might even be made by Mungio. They feel so similar to those. But I wanted to get those out after trying the Kit Pass because I thought they might be similar, but um, they're not, they're really not. The uh, um, So I just wanted to go over these, these two budget-friendly versions because I know people are interested in that. So what I did, I started out by swatching the Swiss color. These crayons right here, or this strip right here, then I found Neo Colors and I found the most similar colors and I swatched those out. Some of them are identical. Um, then I did the Woodies, then I did the Kit Pass, then I did, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, and then I did the Crayola Portfolios. So the Portfolios, right off the bat, they are not, they're much oilier, they are very transparent. I did them on black, very transparent. Once you add water, they disappear. So I'm not considering them as a watercolor crayon substitute. I mean, you definitely could do watercolor crayon tutorials with them, but they're not as opaque. They're not as, um, just as a uh, dry feeling. So, but I did want to put them here just because I was feeling the Kit, pa Kit Pass felt a little bit stickier. And when I first used them here in the sketchbook, I was just kind of um, doing like a blend test. They blended really well, but they're very sticky. Like I put the glassine in here because they're going to get on the other page without, if I don't put water in them. Uh, then I blended them out with water and they did, did get a little streaky and then I blended them out with white and water. And so I was pretty happy with the way they performed. One thing I found out, I found with these Kit Pass pastels is that they are more, they're more opaque but the color is also more muted. So here on the black watercolor paper, there's our Swiss color, which is that the, the uh, student grade Caran d'Ache, $10 for 15 colors. Neo Color 2, a little bit more vibrant on the black. The Kit Pass was probably the most vibrant and opaque on the black. The Woodies were a little less vibrant and opaque on the black, and then the portfolios disappeared when I put water on them. So um, here you can see the dry swatch. Couldn't really see the blue because the blue is so translucent. But um, so if you're working on a dark paper, that Kit the Kit Pass are going to work great for you. So swatching these out, the Swiss color, a lot of colors seemed identical to their Neo Color 2 counterparts. The blue didn't, but I don't think I had the exact same blue. So I had, um, oh, you know, I did another swatch here. I did the old, the old uh, half stick Swiss color. Well, the, new, the Karen Dosh crayons that I got that were like the student grade, I guess. They were sold half stick at an art supply store 20 years ago. I did the old versus the new on these and I didn't see much difference, but the, the new ones, where there was a difference, new ones were more saturated and reactivated a little bit easier, but this is also brand new product and that was 20 year old product. So, um, and some of the colors were different. Like the new blue is this more ultramarine color. The old blue is more of like a, like a Prussian bluish color, not quite Prussian blue, but you know, a little bit more that way. Um, the reds weren't quite the same those light blues weren't quite the same. But quality wise, I'd say the new ones seemed a little bit better reactivated wise, like the yellow ochre there, but not enough that, I, I think that could just be accounted for by old product versus new product, kind of stuff kind of drying out. Um, so old and new, didn't really notice big difference in quality, just the dry factor. But between the Swiss color and the Neo color too, 
I really didn't see much difference other than some of the colors. I didn't have like this uh, Neo Color 2. I'm thinking, which one did I use? Was it this one? This was Ultramarine. Whoops, let's put it over here. And then let me do this right here, which is actually lighter. It's almost like a cobalt, but I didn't have... I'm trying to see if... I, I don't seem to have one that's just this color in the Neo Color. And I think I have all the colors, so that's... You know, it could maybe it's just a weaker version of that. But then when we add water, you'll see that the uh, the one in the Swiss Color set is just this is a Swiss Color one. It's just kind of more streaky and it breaks up and it just, you know, it's just not very um, overwhelming. You know, it's not that great. But then when you look at the Neo Color, it's like wow, that's that's pretty good. That actually reminds me. Well, no, not quite. It's kind of similar to the the old. Actually, it's very similar to the, what was in the old set. See that that looks a lot like what was in the old, um, the old Swiss color set. Um, but then you've got a color like those reds. The reds are very very similar. So we've got this red. I think those two reds are pretty similar. So there's a Swiss color there. There's the uh, neo color too. Yeah, it might be a little bit of a shade different. I mean, the Swiss color is beautiful, opaque, really rich. And so is the Neo Color too. So I think that would be a great starter setter set if you got that Swiss color set and maybe picked up another, picked up the ultramarine blue and, um, you know, maybe a different green, maybe an olive green or something. But I think that's a really good, uh, that's a really good, dupe for the Neo Color 2s. I mean, they're the same company. I honestly think sometimes that companies will release a smaller, like half stick size. Like you're getting, it's, you're probably not really saving that much money when you see what you, what you get, but like you're getting uh, just a little over half the stick on the Swiss Color and you're paying like eight bucks for 15. So it's about 50 cents a stick. You can buy these for like two dollars. Well, so it's like double the price to get, these are about two twenty-five a stick. These would be about you know, 60 cents a stick. So yeah, I mean, these do cost more even when you account for, you know, doubling up the price, but I think that would be a great option to get you started to see if you even like them. But they are a little bit less pigmented, it seems like, for some colors, but it's not like a huge difference. It's not a huge difference. The, um, when I added water, I still kept a lot of pigmentation in the Swiss color and the Neo color. The woodies, I felt like they really broke down. Also, I felt like the Kip Pass didn't quite dilute as well as the Swiss Color or Neo Color. So they're fun. They're great on dark paper. I think they work great on their intended purposes of using them on um, like glass, using them as a, ch a children's product. But honestly, you have 15 colors for 10 bucks, and this is 16 colors for, if you're shopping on Amazon, almost $20. So I definitely would say go for the uh, the Swiss Color from Karen Dosh. This is what the box looks like. I'll link to it as well. I'll link to all these in case you want to find them. But I think this one is really the one to beat. Now, if you look at the, the, um, the Kit Pops remind me a little bit more of the Woodies, but I found the colors to be a little more muted. They are half the price. I think this is about 38 bucks to $40 for a set of 18. This for 16 is 17 to $20. So for what you get though, the product in here I think is about identical. Now let's see. Well, you know what? Let me take the silver one that I chopped down just to kind of show you how much product is in there. Where we go. And I have reviews on these other products too, if you want to check them out. I have another crayon comparison. So if we take this, um, as you might remember from the Woody review, I actually sharpened and cut down from the other side to see where the the pigment ended. And I did that on camera, so you can see that I wasn't like fooling anybody. I wasn't like doing any tricks or anything. So they're essentially the same length. So, and then if we look at the the amount of product in there, hopefully the camera will focus here. It's the same diameter, I would say, pretty darn close to the same diameter. That might look a little bit bigger because it's uh, lighter in color. Let me grab a white one just so you can see. Actually, it almost looks like this is a little bit bigger. I'm not sure, but for all intents and purposes, they're the same amount of product. Um, let's just, I'll swatch them out just so you can kind of see how they lay down. Let me find a couple colors. Let's do the ultramarine color because that looks like it's pretty similar. So this is the woody. Nice and creamy. This is the Kit Pass. 
a little bit silkier, a little bit more opaque when I'm putting it down like this. It comes down a little bit softer. That's why I was thinking, is these more like an oil pastel? So these feel a little bit drier than these. These feel a little softer. I think it probably would be really good on glass. Um, and then let's add some water to them. I think the woodies are going to dissolve a little bit better. You see, that dissolves pretty well. It can even get rid of the grain of the paper. Okay, I just want to dunk it, just slightly tap it. I don't want to, I won't try to be equal with the water that I'm using. I found that the kit pass is a little bit harder to reactivate and it kind of leaves a, um, you get more of a stain and you can see it there a lot better. You get a stain where it was put down and it really grabs the paper there. And then as you, as you wet it, it almost seems like it sinks into the paper or it almost seems like it absorbs in and you don't get as much like pigmentation going out. It could be because there's white added that that could be why they're so opaque. Uh, so that would be the woody versus the, I know it's like apples and oranges because the colors not exactly the same, but um, that's why the kit pass looks brighter than the woody. I think it's just like there's white pigments in there or something that's making it probably a white pigments making it a little bit brighter. So I wouldn't necessarily say the kit pass are the best for adding water. I think blending the colors together with water like I did like I did here was good, but then you're you're also going to have some transference to the next page. And I don't think you'd get as much transference with these other products because they're not as they're not as um they're not as thick. They're not as oily. So if you're going to use them in a sketchbook, I I'd probably not recommend the kit pass. I'd recommend any of these other products, but if you're looking for quality and budget, I would definitely go with the Swiss color. I think the Swiss color is a better quality than the woody. So these are the Swiss colors here. Hmm. You know what? Maybe I will just cut that. I'll cut us cut that in a strip just so we can put them right next to each other. I know people think I give the. Uh, I'm trying to be very fair because people were like, "You're not being fair with the with the woodies when I reviewed them." And I honestly, if it, if they were priced the same, then I then I probably would not be. I would not be as hard on them. But they're priced. They're you know, these are, that's four times the price. The woodies are, are four times the price almost as a Swiss color. So, um, so yeah, uh, color wise, I think that they're equally strong that like that purple is a little bit nicer. I will give it that and that blue is nicer. Um, but other than that, I really don't see a huge benefit to the woodies over the Swiss color. The kit pass is more muted, but, and better on dark paper and probably better on glass. And then the portfolios, the Crayola portfolios are great. They're just not the same type of product. They're way too, um, they're way too translucent. So I just wanted to give you that update and uh, tell you that the Swiss color are very, very similar to Neo Color 2s, but some colors they fall a little short, like the ultramarine blue is a little bit streakier. But I think other than that, like you could layer up pretty well and not you know, like if I would, if I went in with a little bit more of these colors, even if I went over a little bit more with this blue, I think I could build it up enough that, you know, I could do the watercolor crayon course and not have issues. And the white, I mean, the Swiss color white is nice and opaque. So it's as opaque as a neo color too. And that's, you know, something you'd really be in need of, I think. So let me add a little, I usually don't put that much water on. So I'm just going to kind of do it the way I would add water. I, yeah, I think, I mean, I did kind of lift up buy it buy an ultramarine blue if you're gonna if you're gonna get the Swiss color buy an ultramarine blue but like that sky blue color is fine I really love this kind of uh, ceruleanish blue yeah they're a great product that that leafy green color that's a little disappointing I'd probably go if you like that color I'd get that in the neo color 2 but actually the neo color 2 version is also kind of puny it's also kind is that the color I used that's also kind of puny. You don't generally put too much water with these if you want to get those opaque looks like I do with my watercolor course, my watercolor crayon course. But yeah, this one does feel a little bit weak. But all in all, for the price, I think it's a really good value. But I just thought I would share this since I did just get those Kit, kit Pass crayons. And I just love the packaging. I feel like other countries, like the Woodies are a kid's product too. I feel like other countries do better at kid's products than we do here in America. Um, granted, you pay for them. They're expensive, but it's, I feel like they don't even give the option in this country for those products. Now, I mean, now they're important, you can find them, but I think most parents just see Crayola, think that's the best and they go with that. They're like, why would I pay double, triple, quadruple the price of Crayola? Crayola portfolio stuff, I think is wonderful, but I think that's probably, I'm, I'm curious actually, now I wanna see where that's made because if it's made in Korea, I will bet you it's Mungio. Where are these made? Made in Spain, huh? 
<laughs> made in Spain. Oh well, of course that's an older package. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't think any of these are bad products, but best bang for your bucks was color, definitely. Pick up a few open stock Neo colors, but if you want to start with this, I started with this set, just like the 20 year old version of this set, and I loved them so much that I bought the 84 set of the. Well, actually, I bought a few open stock, then I bought the 84 set. But yeah, this is definitely a solid way to get started with these. If you want to see if you like the medium before you spend a lot of money, do a couple tutorials online. I have some tutorials. Um, pick up colors as you need them. And I think that would be an excellent way to get going because look at this. I have some of these. I mean, I used this for quite a while and I've hardly, I mean, I used up maybe a third of that. The stuff lasts. Karen Dosh products are really good. They last really well. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that out there. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll help you if I can. None of these are bad products. In fact, all the colors are a little bit different with the exception of Swiss Color New Color 2. A lot of those are identical. Um, so like you could mix them together. So let's try that actually before I let you go. Let's take, let's take this red woody. Okay, is that on camera? Let's take the red woody. Let's mix it into this uh, lighter. I think this is a little bit lighter. Oh no, that's all the same color. Let's take a darker. Let's go the darker, this darker kind of crimson color. Mix it into the red wood woody. Then let's mix it into, is this red a little bit lighter maybe? It's not really that much lighter. Let's mix it in with this peachy orange color. And then let's mix it to a lighter yellow here from the Kit Pass. And then we'll go to the pastel yellow of the Woody. Now these, the, the Kit Pass might make it a little weird because of the, uh, the way that the colors tend to absorb into the paper rather than sit on top. But let's just see what happens when we mix these. Because I find that like if you get a product that you can mix with other things you already have, then it makes that other product more useful. So you get a multiplier, right? So say if you said you have a set of 12 Neo Color 2s and you buy a set of 12 Woodies, but they're different colors, you know, by adding those colors together, you've just multiplied the use of both of them. You know what I mean? So it makes them more useful than just 24 color. Well, it makes only 24 colors, but it, you know, it makes them, it makes them way more useful than just a set of 12 or two sets of 12, because you, you basically have a set of 24 that you can mix together. Does that make any sense to you? They're compatible, they'll work together. So if you're curious about them, you want a muted range to go with your woodies, the Kit Pass would be a good option. They're just a little bit different, but compatible. So, and then if you want to, you know, spike it with some really bright colors, let's say you've got Let's say you've got the kit pass and you're like, okay, I want to do, I want to color something that's, that's pink. Maybe I want to make a pink ball or balloon or whatever. So you can do something pink, but like, ah, that red I have just isn't quite right. Then you could go to like a different, different brand. Maybe you'll go to this magenta purpley color. This is a red violet. You could do that and add that in around the outside. Now this is more transparent, but you can use the pigmentation, the color payoff of the, of this pastel and use the opacity of the lighter pastel and kind of mix them together and get what you're off, what you're after. So if you buy a product and you're like, oh, I wish I didn't get that. It's not quite, it's not quite what I wanted. See if you can mix it with something else you have and get the effect that you're going for. So what I recommend in the kit pass, I think I would for applications like working with kids, working on glass, cause you want something soft for glass. Um, working on dark papers, absolutely. Like if you want to get some like black construction paper and do some projects with the kids, anything like that. Um, yeah, I would, I would recommend them. Otherwise I think they're a little bit pricey. Would I recommend the Swiss Color by Karen Dosh? Absolutely, 100%. I would recommend these. You really can't beat it for the price of around $10. Would I recommend the Woodies? I don't think they're a bad product. I think they're nice, um, but I just think they're overpriced. Personally, 40 bucks for 18 of these seems like a lot. I mean, granted they have the wood casing. If you have arthritis or something where you can't handle a small skinny barrel, these are gonna be great. They're gonna be durable if you're throwing stuff in a bag and they're gonna get banged around. You know, if you have a rough studio situation where stuff gets dropped and stepped on, things like that, you want something durable. These are really durable because of the wood casing. So yes, I would recommend them for that. They're just more expensive. If you only are looking for what's gonna be on the page, the pigmentation, I would say go for the Carry Dash Neo Color 2. These are 
um, the same price or less than the woodies in America anyway. And I feel like the pigment, the, the color payout is much better. Neocolor 2 is here, woodies there. I feel like when you add water to them, they don't dissolve to nothing as much as the woodies will. They just seem to be a little bit more robust, but the woodies are softer and the kit pass are softer. So if you're like a collage artist and you want to add on top of your collage and have it stand out and have it be opaque, then the woodies or the kit passes are going to be a better option. So it really just depends on what you like to do. I think it's nice to have a good variety of supplies in your studio. So when you have that, that project and you need to add something to it, you can grab the product that's going to work for you. And, um, yeah, just know what your needs are and then you can, you know, make sure you're getting the product that's for you. If you work only in sketchbooks, I wouldn't recommend the Kit Pass because they're they're kind of smudgy. See that? How much they smudge? And they're going to rub off onto the next page. So, you know, the, the woodies don't smudge very much. The Neo colors don't smudge at all. Of course, when you add water, it's going to really reduce the smudgeability. But, yeah, I mean, get whatever fits your budget and fits your needs and feel good about your decision. Use them, you know, don't keep them to be too precious. Buy them, use them, enjoy them, whatever your pre preference is. I'm not here to yuck on anyone's yum. I think get products, try to use them with what you already have, magnify, multiply their uses like that, and you'll feel good about your purchase because you're actually using it despite what you paid for it or didn't pay for it. This was also the, this was also the kit pass, just kind of swatched out and blended together fairly like a, a thick a thick layer blended. So, you know, they're nice and vibrant. I think this was a kit pass. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, actually, no, this is the, this is a Swiss color. <laughs> I'm so confused by now. So I knew I had to get this video done before I completely got all scrambled up, but, um, yeah, they're all good. Swiss color would definitely be my budget quality for budget pick. So if you've been thinking about that, I know some people were curious about it when I posted a sat chat and I said, I purchased them. Um, but yeah, I, I would recommend them. The other ones, you go, you got to use your own judgment because, well, Neo Color 2s, I do recommend them, but you got to use your own judgment because at the end of the day, you're using these, you're paying for them. It's money out of your wallet and I want to make sure you're getting the right stuff. And, uh, and sometimes the right stuff is what you already have and, you know, get to know that, get to know those products. All right. I'm a deal. D I'm a D influencer person that talks you out of buying the stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Give me a thumbs up if you like these um, casual comparison videos. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.